Welcome to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green, where you'll discover actionable strategies to help your student to reach their academic goals, to excel at standardized testing, and to plan for the college admissions process painlessly. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Green. We are back. Dr. Stephen Green, the success doctor with the Make the Grade podcast. And speaking of podcast today, get your pen, get your notes. We need a lot of notes to be taken. I'm going to be telling you how to maximize your pod experience. Not podcasting, pods. So what is a pod? Well, if you are not familiar, here's what's going on. So many students, so many schools, so many people are now on virtual learning, home learning, remote learning, call what you may, homeschooling. And what's happened is families and groups have banded together to form small little consortiums we are calling pods. So the pods would typically have a commonality. Maybe they're all fifth graders. Maybe they all go to the same school. Maybe live in the same neighborhood. But it's there really for support. One of the driving forces of the pod isn't even academic. It's almost a child care issue because parents have to go back to work or have to work at home. And it's difficult to monitor individually while you're working, especially if you have multiple children, several things going on at once. And as an adult, trying to do your day job. Difficult. So let's get right to the meat of the topic for this episode, which is how do you how does a student, how does a parent, how does a family, how does a pod maximize the pod experience? So number one, you got to make sure there's compatibility. I imagine that if the kids don't get along or the circumstances aren't favorable that way, you're going to have some issues, just like you would in a normal classroom. So you need to have a commonality there. Maybe they're friends. Maybe they're in the same class. This seems fairly obvious, but sometimes things get put together more for convenience or because this is kind of all you could find than are being put together from an academic compatibility standpoint. So my thing's always academics. That's where I prioritize. So can the members of the pod, grade level, socially, uh, get together and work together? So that's an important consideration. Number two, you must have your structures in place. I talk frequently about the five important structures of home learning. I'm going to get into them very briefly now. Number one, and this is true with all true with the pod. Number one, you have to have your physical structure in place. Where are the children going to work? Are they all at one big table? Are they separated in different rooms? Are they sitting on the floor? Do they have desks? Did you bring in tables and maybe set them up? And I have seen, and as an aside, Right now, I'm administering four different pods uh, of different age groups. I'm going to draw on some of that experience throughout this. But in one case, families actually bought tables, de facto desks, and each child has a table, their desk, their workspace, they're separated, they're socially distanced, and they're working there. So you must have a physical structure. You got to have a time structure. The time structure of a pod does not have to mirror 100% the school unless the kids have to be in front of the screen engaged in the class at the time, which does happen. Some schools are having structures where, whatever, from 9.20 to 10.45, it's math class, and they have to be logged in to that class. But as an administrator of a pod or a member of a pod, you have to have a time situation that's understood by everybody. You can't have one child running around doing what they want and another one doing something else. Number three is the academic structure. What is driving the academics? Most likely, it's going to be material from the school, but it may not completely be that. And you may have children at different levels. You may have somebody who's an advanced math student paired with somebody who's <clears throat> struggling with math slightly more. Fourth structure is accountability. Who is keeping the children and the students accountable? Is it the administrator of the pod? Are the parents? Is it the teachers? How's the grading happening? And last one is support. If you need exterior support, where are you going to get it? 
I'm administering some pods. There's, I'm handling most of this, but there are things that we need extra help on. Sometimes it's, it's, it's actual physical care. We have six kids in one of the pods. Sometimes they bring in a second admin to break the groups up into smaller groups. But you need to know where that support's coming from ahead of time. You don't want that to be uh, something you're concerned about when it's a big problem. As I like to say, you don't want to find the number for the firehouse when the fire's already started. Plan ahead, be proactive. You need, number three, you need to evaluate and reevaluate. How is it working? Are the kids still compatible two, three weeks in? Are they working at a similar pace? Are they helping each other? What's working? Do more of it. What's not working? Do less of it. Important. Test and measure, reevaluate, and then move ahead. Number four, I feel strongly about this one. Go beyond academics. Most of the pods I'm experiencing, and most of the ones that people I know are doing and working in, are centered on the academics and the child care aspect because that's the real reality of what's going on, particularly in the first two, three months of school. But don't be, don't be hesitant about bringing other things in. I've talked to people that are putting pods together to do art, to do music, to have like a little, almost like a little chamber uh, orchestra that they're putting together. I've had heard about ones where people are doing art. A lot of people do dance. They're getting together and doing dancing, sports. So the pod does not necessarily have to center on academics, although many do. But think about branching out and bringing in what I'm going to call extracurricular activities to the pod. Steve Green here, the Make the Grade podcast. My goal, always, to provide actions that parents and students can take immediately to maximize their education. Talking today about pods, how to get the most out of your pods. Speaking of maximizing, how do you maximize your pod experience? Number five, set goals. Set individual goals for each member of the pod. Set collective goals for the pod as a group. Where do you want everybody to be at the end of each week? Where do you want the group to be at the end of each week? Where do you want to be each day? This falls back on the accountability structure. You can't just set a goal after it's happened. you got to set a goal. So in the pods I'm running, Monday we sit down, we get together. What are we going to accomplish this week? We've got all the school things. Yeah, 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 check, check, check. But what else are we going to do? Are we going to get better at our time management? Are we going to get better at taking notes? Are we going to get better working together, cooperating? There's tangibles, there's intangibles. There's subjective, there's objective. Number six, I like to encourage teamwork and group work in the pods to a point. Obviously, part of the reason the pod is your social distancing from the larger group, but the assumption is the children in the pod are COVID-free safe, so they can work together at least to a point. So we have done a lot in one of the pods with teamwork, group work, uh, sharing responsibilities, doing activities together. I brought a big whiteboard into one of the pods. It's basically a, like a blackboard would be in a classroom, a chalkboard, old school. <laughs> uh, and we take turns writing problems on the board. We're also doing the same thing collectively through the technology because we're all sharing the same program on the computer. But the point is, how do the kids work together, do group work? Number seven, Interface with other pods. Now, th I'm not talking about physically. We had a situation, a pod I was running last week, where we got on to a group call with another pod. So there were seven people at my location, me and the six members of the pod, and four at another one. And we did like a Jeopardy game. We had the kids playing against each other while they were learning a topic. So we would flash a math problem on the screen. They would all do it. One team would get a point which, who got it right, things like that. But we interfaced with our pod. It was really fun. Kids liked it, a little competitive, positive competitiveness. It was good, and we'll continue to do it. Number eight, seek expert advice. Look, parents are doing the best they can. Teachers are doing the best they can. But parents at home running the pod, this is not what you're trained to do. This is not what you're used to doing. In some cases, frankly, it's not what some people want to do. They're doing it out of necessity. So don't be hesitant to seek expert advice outside of the pod when needed. I have four other pods I'm working with that just consult me whenever, irregularly. How do we handle this? What's your advice on this? What would you do in this situation? 
because you need a trained teacher. The education is a skill. Education is something you can learn to do. There's all sorts of theory within it that you learn as a teacher and you get experience as a teacher. So ask when you need help. It's not a, it's not a bad thing. Number nine, interface with teachers, which c- could be an 8B. But the teacher, in this case, I mean the students' teachers, the children in the pods' teachers. So in the pods I'm admitting, I have set up a situation where about once a week, once every other week, we have an email exchange with the teachers, make sure everybody's on the same page, how they're doing, is everything being covered, are there any gaps, anything that isn't being handled correctly, anything not being submitted. And all I always ask, what are we going to do next? Because one of the things I do in all the pods I admin is I pre-teach and preview material for the kids. Teach it to them ahead of time. So when they see it in the instruction, it's, it's almost a semi-review for them. It really helps them academically. It helps their comfort level. helps their confidence. And the last tip I'd give you, number 10, is, is the pod does not have to be an emulation of school. It can be a much more open freer environment. I look at it more almost like day camp interfacing with school. Let the kids have fun. Let them interact. Let them talk to each other. They don't have to sit there stoically staring at a screen. And, and that's not what school's about either a lot of the time. But fundamentally, that's what a group classroom requires. You have 25, 30 children in a classroom. It just to make it through the class, you have to have a lot of structure. You need quiet. You need people all on the same page engaged. So when you have a pod with three, four, five, six people, you can have a lot more interaction, talking, working together, comparing answers, things like this. So there I've given you 10 tips, and any one of them will help you. But real quickly, number one, compatibility. Two, structures. Three, evaluation. Four, go beyond academics. Five, set goals. Six, teamwork and group work. Seven, interface with other pods. Eight, seek expert advice. Nine, interface with teachers. Ten, make the pod unique. You don't have to emulate school to be successful and for the children to learn. Steve Green, the Make the Grade podcast. Let me give you three other things you can do. I offer a virtual learning plan. It's, it's an excellent tool. Parent, family, fills out a survey, completes a questionnaire, Based on the questionnaire, I put together a two or three page document for you that guides you through home learning. Make something clear. Home learning is not going to be limited to virtual learning during the shut-in. There's always been homework. There's been homework. I've been in education 30 plus years. There's been homework, all 30 of them. So there's always a home com- component to learning. And this is what this plan does. It's that much more valuable in a virtual situation. Number two, September 10th, 2020. 8 p.m. Eastern Time, www.makethegrade.school. Virtual back-to-school event, perfect for parents. Get tons of information about ways to maximize your back-to-school experience. There are six expert panel speakers covering all sorts of things across the board. Number three, www.makethegrade.community, the success community. Tremendous resource, tremendous support for everything I've talked about today. So, let's wrap it up. Steve Green, a success doctor. Make the Grade, my website, makethegrade.net. All things accessible through there. You've also got the summit at makethegrade.school. You've got the success community at makethegrade.community. Love your feedback. Love your comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Please share this podcast if it helps because I know the more people that get this information, especially now, the more positive stuff that's going to be happening in the education world. My role to help students, parents, families to maximize their education. Thank you again. Have a great week. Have a great month. Talk to you soon. You've been listening to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. For more resources and support, please visit makethegrade.net.